Hey, band students, let's do some more trigonometry. Uh, so in the last video, we talked about the law of sines, also known as the sine, the sine rule, also what I call the sine property. And what we found at the end of that video was uh, we found a triangle, an oblique triangle, which means a non-right triangle. And what we found was that when we had two sides and the included angle, that the sine rule was no help at all in helping us solve that triangle. So what do we do? Well, we use what we call the law of cosines or the cosine rule, or if you're me, you call it the cosine property. But whatever you call it, first off, let's come up with it, okay? So here we have a triangle. Uh, now, in case you're wondering if this is a, a right angle at the top, it's not supposed to be, okay? As a matter of fact, what I want it to be is an obtuse triangle because I'm going to rotate it later on and show you something. But for right now, let's just say these angles can be anything, all right? And uh, so uh, we, we labeled the angles. We labeled the sides, as always. Side A is going to be opposite angle A. Side C is opposite ang angle C. Side B is opposite angle B. I drew an altitude in there uh, for, the, for the height. And let's do one more thing. Let's, uh, let's label this um, x here and label this b minus x right there. And, um, and now, so if this is an altitude, that means this is a right angle and this is also a right angle. And uh, so now I want to think about the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, what does the Pythagorean theorem tell us? Well, it tells us a couple of things. It tells us that uh, x squared plus h squared is c squared. So uh, c squared equals x squared plus h squared. And it also tells us we have this right triangle over here that uh, a squared, this hypotenuse, equals b minus x squared plus h squared. Okay? And... Uh, well, let's, let's solve both of these for h squared. So that means that h squared is going to be c squared minus x squared. And also that h squared is going to be a squared minus b minus x squared. And folks, if h squared equals this and h squared equals that, then this equals that. So we have c squared minus x squared equals a squared minus let me just multiply this out, okay? This is going to be b squared minus 2bx plus x squared. And now I'm just going to go ahead and uh, uh, distribute that minus. So I'm going to get minus b squared plus 2bx minus x squared, okay? And the first thing I can do is I can uh, uh, add x squared to both sides. So that just goes away. And we are left with c squared equals a squared minus b squared plus 2bx. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of uh, reorder the, uh, uh, the terms a little bit. And I'm going to call this, uh, I'm going to move the, I'm going to move everything over here to over here. And then I'm going to switch sides. So I'm, basically I'm solving this for a squared. So a squared is going to be b squared plus c squared minus 2bx. Now, what's that x? Well, uh, I guess there's a couple of different ways I could define it. One way is to say, um, I know that the cosine of a, cosine of a is going to be adjacent over hypotenuse. That's x over c. So that tells me that x equals c times the cosine of a. That's one way to define what, uh, what x is. But I also know this over here, that uh, the cosine of c is adjacent over hypotenuse. That's going to be b minus x over a. So that tells me that b minus x equals a cosine of c, which tells me that x equals b minus a cosine of c. All right. Well, that's interesting. So first, let's take uh, this one here and plug it into x. So I'm going to say a squared equals b squared 
plus c squared minus 2, oops, minus 2 times b times c cosine of a. This is an important result because look what it's telling us. It's telling us that if you have b and c and the cosine of a, in other words, this side b, this side c, and this angle a, then I can figure out what this other side a is. Okay, that's exactly the situation that we were given in the last video that we couldn't figure out from the law of sines. Uh, when you had two sides and an included angle, you couldn't figure out how to find uh, the other side. Now we can, okay, cool. Now that we've done this, I also wanna take this other definition for x, and I wanna plug that in to this second to last line and see what happens. Well, what's gonna happen is we get a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2b times, oops, yeah, 2b times this thing, b minus a cosine of c. All right, so that's a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus, let me just distribute this, 2b squared plus 2ab cosine of c. Well, b squared minus 2b squared is just negative b squared. So I get a squared equals c squared minus b squared uh, plus 2ab cosine c. And if I rearrange my terms and I solve for c squared, that tells me that c squared equals, uh, let me get this right, a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cosine of c. So let me just write that one right under this one. Uh, I'm getting uh, c squared equals a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cosine c. And folks, look at this. These are the exact same thing. I've just turned, I've just uh, switched my a's and my c's. So again, what I'm getting is, if I want to find one side squared, I take the sum of the squares of the other two sides, and then I subtract two times the product of those other two sides, times the cosine of the opposite angle from that side. Huh. So now what I'm wondering is, can I get a similar uh, answer for b squared? Let's find out. Okay, so what I've done is I took my triangle and I kind of turned it around, okay? So now instead of B being my base, A is my base. And, uh, and what I see is uh, if I'm going to take, uh, well, if I'm going to take an altitude, I have to extend this side a little bit here and drop this down, okay? So this is going to be H this time. And this time, let me just call this X right here. And so my two right angles this time are going to be this little right angle here and then this whole thing here. So the two right angles are uh, a plus x squared, that's this whole side here, plus h squared gets me b squared. So in other words, h squared equals b squared minus a plus x squared. And, uh, and then the little one, which is uh, x squared plus h squared equals c squared. In other words, h squared equals uh, c squared minus x squared. Okay, well again, if h squared equals this, and if h squared equals that, then this equals that. All right, so I get b squared minus, and let me just go ahead and uh, uh, multiply this out. And I'm also going to distribute the minus at the same time. So I get a squared minus 2ax minus x squared equals c squared minus x squared. And again, the first thing I can do is add x squared to both sides, and those things go away. So now I'm left with uh, b squared 
minus a squared minus 2ax equals c squared. Solving for b squared, that tells me b squared equals a squared plus c squared plus 2ax. Now it's time to find out what x is. Okay, so here's my angle B. Now, I don't have a, uh, a right triangle that that angle's in. However, I do have this angle over here that is the supplement of my angle B. Aha, uh -huh. I remember something about supplementary angles. If two angles are supplementary, that means they have the same sign, but their cosines are negatives of each other. Okay, so let's find the cosine of this angle here. And the cosine of that angle there is x over c. So that means the cosine of my angle b is going to be negative x over c. And what that tells me is that x equals the negative, oops, sorry, I didn't put the b in there, equals negative c times the cosine of b. Let's plug that in there and we get b squared equals a squared plus c squared minus 2ac cosine b. And sure enough, that is exactly like what we got uh, with the other two, where you have a side squared, this side squared, is going to be the sum of the other two, of the squares of the other two sides, a squared plus c squared, minus 2 times this side times this side, the other two sides, times the cosine of that opposite angle. That's what the law of cosines tells us, otherwise known as the sine rule, otherwise known as the sine property, if you're me. Okay, so uh, now you may be asking yourself, <laughs> so, so what? How does this help us? Well, let's look at an example. Let's look at this example right here. We have a triangle, and I know the length of this side. I know the length of this side, and I know the measure of the included angle there. I don't know anything else, though. I don't know what angle B is. I don't know what angle C is. And I also don't know what this side A is. Now, we know how to figure out what the side of, of A is. Because remember, A squared equals B squared plus C squared minus 2BC times the cosine of A. And we know all those things. We know that B is going to be... 13, so 13 squared. We know that C is 11, so that's 11 squared, minus 2 times 13 times 11 times the cosine of A, which is 55 degrees. And that comes out to be, I'm getting uh, 125.957, approximately. Okay? So if A squared is that, then just take the square root. And what we're going to get is A is approximately 11.223. So this is 11.223. Cool. Now, uh, how are we going to get the, uh, the um, angles? Well, now we can go back to the law of sines and get the angles that way. Oh, that'll be easy. So what we'll do is we'll say, okay, I know that now I know my A's. I know angle A and side A. So I'm going to say that uh, the sine of 55 over 11.223 is going to be... Now, I'm, I'm going to make a uh, suggestion to you here. Go for the smaller of the two angles. And if you're thinking, well, how do I know which one's the smaller of the two angles? It's the one... It's the one opposite the smaller of the two sides, okay? So I have C, which is opposite 11 inches here, and I have B, which is opposite 13 inches. I'm going to look for C. Now, why? Why am I suggesting that? The sine of C over 11, okay? The reason I'm suggesting that is remember that when you're looking for an angle using the law of sines, you can sometimes get an ambiguous case, and that is you can get like a very small acute angle or an obtuse angle. Well, the only way that you're going to get an obtuse angle is if that's the largest angle uh, that you have. And the largest angle is always opposite the largest side. So if I aim for an angle,
that I know cannot be obtuse, then I'm not going to get an ambiguous case. All right? So that's why I'm aiming for this, uh, this smaller angle here. So now I get the sine of angle C is 11 over 11.223 times the sine of 55. And what is that? That is uh, approximately equal to uh, 0.80287. And that means that the measure of angle C must be uh, seven, no, 53.4 degrees. So this is going to be 53.4 degrees. Now, how to find angle B? Well, at this point, just use the easiest thing you know, which is this plus this plus this have to equal 180. And so that means B is going to be 71.6 degrees. Okay. We got it. We got all the measures of this angle. One thing that you want to do at the very end is make sure that your largest angle is opposite your largest side and your smallest angle is opposite your smallest side. If, if that's not the case, there's a boo-boo somewhere and you need to find that boo-boo. And what I see is my smallest side is this 11 inches, which is opposite the smallest angle. That's good. And my largest side is 13 inches, which is opposite the largest angle. That's also good. It's not a proof that what I did is right, but it's evidence that what I did could be right. Okay? Let me show you one more example. So this time what we're going to do is we're going to find uh, the angles of a triangle where all we know are the sides. So here we have this triangle, 12, 14, 16. It looks like an equilateral triangle. If you look at the measures, it's obviously not. I'm just not very good at drawing triangles. So this side is 12, this side is 14, this side is 16, and I want to know what the angles are. You can still use the law of cosines to do that. Uh, and this is what you do. Now, uh, this time, what I recommend is go for the largest angle, and that's going to be angle B. What we're going to do is we're going to use the law of cosines to find one angle, and then we're going to use the law of sines to find the next angle, and then we're going to subtract those two angles from 180 to find the last angle. Okay? In order to make sure that, we're not, that we don't fall into that ambiguous case by using the law of sines, let's find the largest angle now and get that out of the way because we know the other two angles have to be acute. All right? So uh, let's do that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this one. B squared equals A squared plus C squared minus 2AC cosine B. And I'm going to solve for the cosine of B. So that means B squared minus A squared minus C squared. Oops, it's a weird looking C. There we go. Uh, equals negative 2 AC cosine of B, and that means the cosine of B equals, uh, let's see, that's going to be A squared plus C squared minus B squared over 2AC. I can do that. So the cosine of B is going to be A squared, 14 squared plus 12 squared, 14 squared plus 12 squared minus 16 squared over 2 times 14 times 12. And what does that turn out to be? Uh, that turns out to be 84 over 336, which magically turns out to be 1 fourth. Oh, so the cosine of this angle right here is 1 fourth. So all I have to do is take the inverse cosine the measure of angle B is going to be the inverse cosine of 1 fourth. I'll call it 0.25. And that'll get us our angle. And I'm getting approximately 75.52 degrees. So this is going to be 75.52 degrees. And I know that's our largest angle. Excellent. Okay. So now, which of these angles do I try to get with the law of sines? Doesn't matter. Either one. Um, let's get a, uh, let's go for A, okay? So the sine of A is going to be, well, the sine of A over 14 is going to be the sine of angle C. Whoa, 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 no, the sine of B, there we go. Sine of 75.52 degrees over 16. And if I multiply both sides by 14, I get this. And so 
Well, let's see. What is 14 over 16 times the sine of 75.52 degrees? I'm getting, what am I getting? I'm getting that A, well, yes, that the measure of angle A must be 57.91 degrees. 57.91, okay? And if I want to find the angle, uh, the angle C right now, well, that's just going to be uh, 180 minus that minus that. And when I do that, I get 46.57 degrees. Okay, so there you go. If you have the measures of all the sides, you can use the law of cosines to find uh, the measures of all the angles. Okay, I hope this has been uh, uh, illuminating for you. And I'll see you at the next video. Bye-bye.